Hello, this is Dr. Dan Quinlan coming to you from the Fulton County Veterinary Clinic in Rochester, Indiana. Um, what we're going to cover today is something that is very nasty, but something that really needs to be talked about, and that is our tick borne diseases that we are seeing more and more all the time. They're becoming very prevalent all over the United States. We seem to have a fairly good problem here in Fulton County where it's almost an epidemic area as far as our tick-borne diseases that we are seeing in our pets. Um, the bad thing about the ticks is they can become, the disease can be zoonotic. In other words, we can go ahead and get it too from the ticks that we are seeing. Um, we are seeing a really exponential number of Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, ehrlichia um, in our area here. There's a couple things that I really want to talk to you about as far as ticks and what we can do to go ahead and prevent these problems, what needs to be done as far as if we find ticks on our dogs, cats, ourselves. You have to remember that when these ticks, when they're going ahead and biting an animal, before they bite them, they have got a product that they go ahead and sensitize the skin. In other words, we really do not feel the tick going ahead and starting to bite us. We can feel them crawling around on us, but when they start biting us, then we cannot feel them as far as being on us. What they do, they go ahead and when they take their blood meal, they fill themselves up and gorge themselves with the blood and then in order to go ahead and pass the disease it goes into the body of the tick and goes part of it goes back into us so you have to remember that when you remove a tick that you're not going ahead and stimulating that tick to release the bacteria back into our bloodstream a lot of the old wise tales were that you go ahead and put a match on the tick and you were going to go ahead and get it removed that way. You put soap on it, um, you put Vaseline, things like that in order to remove the tick. Every time that you do that, you're stimulating that tick to release these bacterians back into our bloodstream. So the proper way to go ahead and remove a tick is to go ahead and take a tweezers, go right down against the skin, go ahead and take that tweezers, grab the tick by the head, gently, gently pull the tick off, almost like removing a sliver out of your own finger. That is a proper way of going ahead and doing it. We always felt in order to go ahead and see whether we had the Lyme disease or anything like that was the bullseye ring that we got around where our tick was going ahead and being attached. We have found that approximately oh, 40 to 50 percent of the time that is true but it's not true a hundred percent of the time so we really do not know whether we are infected with the bacterium that is going to go ahead and cause our disease. Um, most of the time if you do get infected you're going to be like flu-like symptoms and that's the same way with our pets where we feel really blah. It's almost like a flu-like symptom where we lay around, we don't want to do anything, our joints hurt, we're just plain blah. Generally then we have a problem as far as with a tick-borne disease. 
The other misnomer that we have is ticks are gone during the winter. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Ticks are here year round. Any time that we get a thaw, any time it gets above freezing, ticks will come out. They also can be brought into our house where they'll lay dormant during the winter. Well, the minute they come in, with our heat that we have in our house and our basement and things like that, the ticks will come out and it only takes one bite of an infected tick that can go ahead and spread the disease. So, with that being said, with what we are seeing here in Fulton County and around the surrounding areas, it's really, really, really important that we need to go ahead and prevent these ticks from going ahead and getting on our pets and ourselves. So, what I recommend is that every time the dog goes out or the cat goes outside, whether you have any woods around or not, that we go ahead and we go over our pet to make sure that we do not have any ticks on them. If they do, then we go ahead and remove them. But, we also have the protection that we can go ahead and give them to go ahead and prevent these ticks from going ahead and attaching. But you have to remember that with the things that we have, I cannot get 100% efficacy as far as going ahead and keeping the ticks off. Most of them will go ahead and start dying, you know, and they're pulled off fairly easily. But, with going ahead and seeing ticks year-round, we really, really need to go ahead and manage this by giving year-round protection against the ticks. What that entails is we have different things that we can use as far as topically, orally, that we give once a month that helps prevent as far as these ticks attaching. You also have to remember that ticks are, you know, in about a, in a four stage area. You have your adult ticks that lay the eggs from the eggs and you can't see the eggs. And then you go into what we call our larva stage, which is very, very small. It's about like a grain of sand. So you're not going to see that, but they're going to be either in your house, in your lawn. You do not necessarily have to have trees around to go ahead and have ticks around. From there they go into what we call the pupa stage. In the pupa stage you can go ahead and see that because they're a little bit bigger. Um, oh, they're like not a grain of sand but a little bit bigger like a small BB that's what you're gonna go ahead and see in the lymph, nymph stage and then from the nymph stage they go ahead and develop into the adult ticks again where we start our life cycle over again um, ticks are really really hard to kill um, just on account of that so we really, really need to go ahead and use the year-round protection. The other thing that you have to remember, that flea or ticks crawl up. In other words, just because your dog does not go out in the woods or anything like that, you have tall grass, you have grass around the edge of your lawn, things like that. They can go ahead and stay in the grass when you let your dog out goes around the fence line and things like that, we can pick up ticks that way. You can take your dog out to, you know, the nature walks and things like that. We are going to go ahead and most likely see ticks on them at that time. Ticks are becoming very, very prevalent as far as all over the United States. There's no place in the United States that you cannot go where you will not be exposed to ticks. Um, we have different diseases in different areas of the country. Mostly what we're seeing around here is our Lyme disease and our anaplasmosis, um, both passed by ticks. But with our 
pets being exposed to these ticks, that means that you and me are also exposed to ticks. So that goes for the human population too. When you're out in the woods, make sure that you go ahead and use the repellent for the ticks. Um, check yourself over when you come in to make sure that you do not have any ticks on you. Um, Any time that your furry friend feels really down and out and you feel that he's not acting right and he had a chance to be exposed to ticks, probably a good idea to go ahead and get him tested for the different tick-borne diseases. Um, what we have here, we have a screening test that does check for five different tick-borne diseases that we can run here in the clinic. It's just a screening test to go ahead and tell us whether we've been exposed or whether we got the disease. Um, Lyme disease and these tick-borne diseases, most of the time, they are treatable. It's not a life sentence against these guys. We can go ahead and treat them with an antibiotic that's called doxycycline, which works fairly well as far as helping with the disease. The main thing is prevention, prevention, prevention. And that is with year-round protection against the ticks, orally or topically. And you have to remember, our kitties also will go ahead and get tick-borne diseases. So there's things that we can give topically to them to help as far as with the ticks also. Also our kitties, if they're in the house, our dogs can bring ticks in. They can go ahead and get exposed that way. So it's something that we have to be very cautious of, something that we have to think about. It's something that can be prevented as long as we go ahead and do it properly with the monthly application. Um, in order to go ahead and find these ticks, you have to remember where most of our ticks will go ahead and go. Most of our ticks will go up towards the ears, the head, the neck area. That's where they have the affinity where they really need to go. So if you have a long haired dog, maybe by going ahead and shaving some of the hair off, it would be easier to, for you to go ahead and find it as far as keeping them groomed. But that's where they mainly stay up towards the front of the dog and we'll see tremendous amount that's inside the ear, in the pinna of the ear. So, I mean, you need to go ahead and check the head, the ears, the neck area, and the shoulders because that is where they generally stay. As far as going ahead and shaving your dog to keep the ticks off, no, that's not gonna help any. It's just gonna be easier for you to go ahead and see them.